Welcome to implicit differentiation using partial derivatives. Remember, we performed implicit differentiation in calculus one. The formula below provides an alternative method for determining dy dx given an implicit function. Here's how it works. If an equation f of x, y is equal to zero, defines y implicitly as a differentiable function of x, then we can determine dy dx by taking the opposite of the partial derivative of f with respect to x divided by the partial derivative of f with respect to y as long as fy does not equal zero. So let's take a moment and see where this formula comes from. So we're gonna start with f of x, y equals zero. Now if our equation is not equal to zero, we can go ahead and move terms around so that it is equal to zero. And then what we're gonna do is differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. And when we do this, we're gonna to have to apply the chain rule to the left side, meaning we're first gonna find the partial with respect to x, then multiply that by dx dx, plus the partial derivative with respect to y times dy dx. Then of course the right side would be zero. Well dx dx is gonna be equal to one, so now what we're gonna do is solve this equation for dy dx. We'll first subtract fx on both sides of the equation. That's gonna give us the partial with respect to y times dy dx equals the opposite of the partial of f with respect to x. And now we just divide both sides by fy. And we have our formula from the previous screen. dy dx is equal to the opposite of the partial derivative of f with respect to x divided by the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Let's go and take a look at some examples and we'll also compare this to the method we learned in Calc 1. We want to determine dy dx of this implicit equation. So it's already equal to zero so we can go ahead and state that f of x y is equal to y to the fourth plus x squared y minus 12. So dy dx equals the opposite of, our numerator is going to be the partial of derivative with respect to x. So we'll treat y as a constant. That would be zero. This would be two xy. This would be zero. And our denominator is gonna be the partial derivative with respect to y. So we'd have four y cubed. This would be plus x squared times one. So plus x squared this would be zero. So as you can see, it's a pretty quick, easy process. We have now found dy dx. Let's go ahead and compare this method to the method we learned in calculus one. So it's the same equation, but now we're gonna use the method from calculus one. So we'll find the derivative of each term, as we normally do, and if it has a y in it, we'll have to multiply it by an extra factor of dy dx, because we'd be applying the chain rule. So we differentiate both sides with respect to x. So here we'd have four y cubed times dy dx. Now here we're gonna have to apply the product rule. So it'd be plus the first x squared times the derivative of y, that would be one times dy dx plus the second, or t plus y times the derivative of x squared, that'd be two x derivative of 12 would be zero, and the right side would also be zero, and now we have to solve this equation for dy dx. So we're gonna factor out dy dx, and then move this term to the right side. So we'd have four y cubed plus x squared, and then we're gonna go ahead and move two xy to the other side, so we'll have negative two xy. And now we divide. So as you can see, the first method was a lot easier and a lot faster. Let's go ahead and make sure the results are the same. Here's what we determined using the old technique and going back to the previous screen, with a lot less work, dy dx of course is the same. Let's go and take a look at a couple more examples. Notice that this is not set equal to zero, so that means f of x, y 
would be equal to sine x plus tangent xy minus five. And now we can go ahead and apply the formula. So we have dy dx equals the opposite of this fraction where the numerator is the partial derivative with respect to x. So we're gonna have cosine x plus, so the derivative of tangent xy is going to be secant squared xy times u prime. Derivative of xy with respect to x is going to be y. Then of course derivative of five would be zero. We're gonna divide this by the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So this derivative would be zero and this is gonna be secant squared xy times x. And of course, derivative of five is zero again. Let's go ahead and simplify this. First fraction would be negative cosine x all over x secant squared xy. Now for the next fraction, be careful of this negative sign here. The entire fraction is negative, so we'd have minus y secant squared xy all over x secant squared xy. So this part does simplify. So our final derivative would be negative cosine x over x secant squared xy. This would just be minus y over x. And let's go and take a look at one more. Let's go and write out f of xy. I'm gonna write this as two natural log x squared plus y squared to the one half power plus three xy, this would be minus four. One more thing we can do is we can take this exponent here and apply the power property of logarithms to simplify this function, let's do that. So we'd have natural log of x squared plus y squared plus three xy minus four. Okay, let's see if we can determine uh, dy dx. Don't forget the negative in the formula. So we're gonna find the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Remember the derivative of natural log u is one over u times u prime. So we'll have one over x squared plus y squared. And then u prime, the derivative of x squared plus y squared with respect to x would be two x, treating y as a constant. Plus the derivative of three xy with respect to x would be just three y. So John there we'll find the partial derivative with respect to y. So we'll have one over u or one over x squared plus y squared times the derivative of x squared plus y squared with respect to y would be two y plus the derivative of three xy with respect to y would be three x. So this is dy dx, but you can see it's kind of messy. So what we'll do now is clear the denominators by multiplying both the top and the bottom of this fraction by x squared plus y squared over one. So let's see what this does. We multiply this fraction by this fraction. Notice the numerator and denominator simplify out. So we're just left with two x plus, here we have to multiply three y times x squared plus y squared. That's gonna be three x squared y plus three y cubed. Let's look at the denominator now. Again, when I multiply this fraction by this fraction here, the numerator and denominator simplify out, so we're left with two y. And then we have to multiply three x by x squared plus y squared, so we'll have plus three x cubed plus three x y squared. Now it's very tempting to try to simplify the twos and the threes and, even ma and maybe even some of the variables. But remember we can't simplify across addition or subtraction and since the numerator and denominator do not factor, this does not simplify and we are done. In the next video we'll take a look at expanding this formula here to help us determine partial derivatives where instead of f of x, y, we have f of x, y, z. I hope you found these examples helpful. Thank you for watching.